Well, it appears that reality is biting. It's biting someone very hard, and that someone is not me. A number of years ago, you may remember a character who come to this exact house and uh, you know a number of people had uh, encouraged this guy and helped him and given him a thousand dollars or even just sent him a few scented candles in the mail you know and all in the hope that he would sort of thrive and get ahead Many people are worried about these YouTube changes that are coming. But I wouldn't be one of them. Because I think there's one principal thing that certain people do not want to face up to. And when these February changes come, they're going to have to face up to it. And that is this fucking bullshit I hear over and over and over again. YouTube is my job. It reminds me of a <laughs> video I saw of a girl who was reading out and, you know, giving a commentary on a ad for dating a social justice warrior millennial young woman. And... Uh, <laughs> she claimed that her job was activism, like protest marches and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, unless you're being paid by George Soros, activism doesn't pay much. And even when you are being paid by George Soros, apparently activism still doesn't pay much. And it's the same with YouTube, you know, it's a hobby, it's a platform, it's a little soapbox, you know, that's probably about as big as this friggin' oil filter box that you can stand on and say, blah, 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 like I'm doing now. But this whole thing of making money off it, you know, it, it reminds me of <laughs> like scrap metal. You know, the prices pre-GFC for scrap metal were brilliant. Even when I was cleaning up this house, they were mm, all right. If you had a lot of it, you couldn't really afford to run newspaper ads to go pick up scrap metal or anything like that. Not really. And, you know, you still get these people who, I mean, I don't know what the price is now. I haven't checked it for a while. But you get all these people who think they're, oh, we're going to make money off scrap metal. And they think they're fucking hit gold until you tell them, dude, it's like fucking 40 bucks a ton or something. One point there it went down to about four dollars a ton. I took through a load and they gave me two dollars fifty. And the next load I took through, I just beat me horn and waved them goodbye, and they could keep their two dollars. But while you've got all these starry-eyed people thinking they're going to make bucket loads of money off getting rid of a half dozen fridges when they're not, it's been the same with YouTube for years. There's this allure of, oh, we can make money without having a real job. But it's all bullshit. That's all there is to it. It's just an allure. It's a dream. I could be the next PewDiePie. This well, guess what? You're one of how many million that's trying to aim for the same thing? There are more people spewing out shit content, and even more people spewing out good content, then there are people who have got all day to watch this stuff. You know, a lot of us are in the real world. Hell, I'm still in my work clothes. And um, this is the thing, you know. <laughs> I think February is going to be when reality strikes. And I think for someone else, you know, it looks like it might be striking. You know, oh, we can try Bitcoin mining. You know, as most of you know, I really haven't been in my general circle of YouTube for a year. It's not to say that I wasn't watching some stuff on YouTube, but a lot of it was movies and business-related stuff. And audiobooks. 
But the long and short of it is, many of us, particularly young males, have, and probably young females too, have a time in our life, in our younger years, especially in these countries where you've got a decent welfare system and stuff like that, where you frolic around for a few years when you're in your early 20s and you don't really do much. But there comes a time where you've got to get a job. There's no other way of saying it, you know. And all these great ideas of you know, oh, well, I can do this and I won't have to work. Well, <laughs> a lot of them pay bargain all or they're just pipe dreams. When you actually sit down and work out the maths, it's bloody pathetic. And, you know, when it gets to the point that you got a, a wife and, and a little baby and whatnot, well, you know, the costs start mounting. I mean, I'm still all right myself. You know, like, I've got this place, I mean, it's, I'm not saying it's a million dollars, but the mortgage is paid for, and I'm not paying any rent either. And theoretically, you know, I could kick my job and fly overseas, hell, I've got a passport, I could, but you know, I don't want to just sort of, <laughs> as the years roll on, you've got to build for a future. And while I'm not investing heavily in any 401k and my superannuation looks fairly pathetic, it's still a darn sight better than some people's superannuation, you know. And there comes a time where as much as you don't want to... The fun years have got to be replaced by the years where you've got to get serious and start doing stuff and make it happen and that means getting a job or possibly having a business, but not a bullshit one, a real one with solid motivation with, and it also helps to have more than one person in this business and just to have drive. And some people just don't have a great deal of drive and I must admit I haven't been the greatest myself. Um, but I'll also admit when uh, you know I had my previous business, my last one, back in, what was it, 2010, 2011, um, you know, you do realise that when you work for yourself, you work harder than you ever knew you could work. But, you know, this whole idea, oh, well, I'll sell some eggs. Um, yeah, you've been going to sell eggs for two years. Motivation much? No, there's no motivation. How hard is it for somebody who's already got chickens to sell eggs, not very hard. And yet this has been going on for two, two and a half years. Oh, I'm, I'm going to sell eggs and make money out of it. Oh, I'm going to do this. Oh, I'm going to be a... No, you won't be able to compete with the big boys, trust me. I know some of the big boys in the business, and or family members of mine do, and they own an astronomical amount of land, and they actually crop their own land to feed their own chickens. And I'm talking, they're rolling hundreds of acres of crop. If not, I think it's more than a thousand, actually. It might be a couple thousand. And this is the thing, you know, while some of these ideas all sound nice, how many eggs are you going to put out? And how many people are going to pay a premium for organic eggs? You know what I'm saying? It's another pipe dream. Pipe dreams ain't getting anybody nowhere. And I think it's going to be good when all of these pipe dreamers and people who may have other labels attached to them finally get the uh, the push in life that they always needed. Maybe not the one they wanted, but the one they needed. And, uh, you know, some as you know, I'm going back into business this year, but there's a couple of people involved and there's a hell of a lot of motivation and, and because I'm already working I'm not scrambling at some pipe dream that I can't afford to do or is not going to go anywhere because I've got that role in motivation you know I remember a particular character and when he left this country and returned to his own country the motivation just dropped right off 
And so did everybody's generosity for him with it. And, you know, this is the thing. Sometimes you get in this circle of pipe dreams and because you're the only person involved in it, your motivation level goes down and because you haven't got any written goals and stated times or anything, do, do, do. next thing you know, you can frolic away in tie days and get nothing done. And guess what? Frolicking away in tie days and getting nothing done doesn't pay. And I don't care what business you're in, it doesn't pay. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're in the video making business, which is another pipe dream, or another business that may be legitimate. If you frolic away your days and you lose your motivation, it's just a downhill run to inevitability from there. And, uh, you know, there's so many situations in life where push needs to come to shove. And the faster the push comes to shove, the better. Because I remember something I watched the other day by Warren Buffett talking about people who just say, well, one day I'm going to go and get this career, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that, or I'm going to start my own business, or blah, 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 blah. But meanwhile, I'm treading water. I'm, you know, killing time. I'm dre and these poor buggers, they do it for like 15, 20 years. And one day, one day, one day, there's a saying we've got over here, gonna do. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it one day. Going to do, going to do, going to do. They're the going to do's. They're always going to do it, but they've never done it. They never actually take the step, you know. And this is the thing, as Warren Buffett said, while in a way your years doing bugger all is like saving up sex for old age. It's a stupid idea, you know. You've got to seize the moment. And if you don't know what that means, it means you've got to make a go of doing stuff today. Not going to do, going to do, going to do, going to do 15, 20 years later, you're still frolicking around. Because there's 15 to 20 years of lost income. In a week's time, I'm meeting up with an advisor um, who actually has qualifications in the business I'm in, or intending to go in. And we're going to do a bloody lot in a short time, including bring on a third person, um, for testing this stuff that is going to be built and uh, I have crunched the numbers on this and there is a shockingly high profit in this and <laughs> I've watched a few other people talk about their experiences in it and uh, it's, it's one of these things where you pay a shit ton of money for something that really shouldn't be worth a shit ton and although it's fairly, you know, there's complications to it, there's a bit of fussiness to it, you know, there's money in it. But I'm not sort of wiling away at this stuff, you know. I said that, you know, I want to start it this year. The very first week that I went back to work, I said, oh, I'll be too worn out after the first week of work, I won't have... I won't do anything in the first weekend because I'll be so worn out from the first week of work. Lo and behold, by the time that first weekend come, I needed one main piece of equipment to do a job. I owned three and was taking them to a mechanic for servicing Saturday morning. That's the kind of motivation that you need to have and should have. But those who just sort of run out of motivation and keep clambering at pipe dreams, it's like a dog chasing their tail. And the sooner inevitability occurs, the faster they can get on with their life and earn some friggin' money and get shit sorted out without hoping someone will give it to them or begging someone for it.